Welcome to this video in which I will be discussing with you two new vulnerabilities that were announced in the ConnectWise software 1708 and 1709. In this video, we will be specifically discussing about the 1709 vulnerability for which um, you know the attack complexity is very low and no privileges are required and that is the reason it is a high severity and high critical vulnerability. So let's get started then by taking an overview of what ConnectWise or Screen Connect software is. It is a typical remote desktop support tool and it is mostly used not limited to managed service providers but it is mostly used by managed service providers now what are managed service providers managed service providers are companies that provide it services it support services to various businesses so for example let's say there are hospitals e-commerce companies manufacturing companies whose core business is not it but they are using it to uh, you know optimize and uh, and to get business efficiency so to those businesses the managed service providers they use this screen connect software to remote in and provide the services the it services and manage their environment and uh, since all this is done over the internet that is the reason the presence of these screen connect servers over the internet is very high when uh, and a vulnerability then in in these servers uh, you know these application servers which are publicly facing that makes it very critical and uh, when i was running uh, searches on Shodan and Census. Shodan and Census are internet scanning and search engines for exposed devices. Uh, on that, if I, when I was running the searches, I was, uh, you know, very surprised to see the number of servers that are internet facing for screen screen connect. Almost eleven thousand servers, if you can see here on Shodan uh, that I'm showing, and. Uh, from whatever that I'm reading the latest on this vulnerability still the 90% of the servers from this number are unpatched they are running the vulnerable screen connect version which makes it a very worrisome situation now uh, the common vulnerability scoring system for this vulnerability 1709 is 10 so overall score is 10 and 10 is the highest possible severity score that can be given to a vulnerability and uh, this vulnerability has gotten the 10 score and 10 means you leave everything and just go and patch your server first and uh, there are several factors that are taken into consideration by NIST when they go ahead and define these uh, scores for the vulnerabilities that are announced for example attack vector in attack vector uh, it is considered how easy it is to exploit I mean the attack vector which is there uh, is is a physical uh, presence needed for the attacker to exploit this vulnerability or can he exploit this over the network if he can exploit this over the network then obviously the severity is high and this vulnerability is exploitable over the net over the network no physical presence is needed in attack complexity it is taken into consideration whether there is any co high complex code required to compromise the server any high complex query required to compromise compromise the uh, application server if not and in this case it's it's a very low complexity code it's a it's just a slash that is needed to exploit uh, this application and that's why um, the attack complexity is very low and severity is very high then are privileges required in this case there are no privileges required so that is the reason the severity is high is user interaction required no no user interaction is required and that is also one of the reason why severity is high and confidentiality integrity availability all get compromised when the attacker gains admin access to this application so yeah i mean because taking these factors into consideration the vulnerability score was given as 10 and as i said earlier if a vulnerability is 10 if the server exists in your environment leave everything go and patch that server stop the business right away and patch that server first now Let's understand which component of this ConnectWise application is affected by this vulnerability. Uh, so this setup wizard.aspx, this is the web page. The setup wizard is the component that sits within this ConnectWise, which is used for initial setup and configuration that is affected by this vulnerability. So setup wizard, as the name suggests, you might have seen, you might have installed applications um, on the servers. You get this wizard installation wizard where you click next, next, and then you create a user for your application. So the setup wizard is similar to that. When you install a ConnectWise application on the server, you will get the setup wizard to set up the application, to install the application. And then 
why in the setup wizard you get an option to create a user for your application and uh, you know this this setup wizard is the page that is vulnerable the code of this page was vulnerable is where the vulnerability was found and this is a page that is built in asp.net we will take an overview of ASP.NET. Um, so step by step, we will build our understanding. We will clear some foundational concepts first, like um, you know what is ASP.NET. In ASP.NET, there are several features which are used for serving the applications. We will look at them and then we will understand the vulnerability. Um, so taking an overview of ASP.NET. So in a nutshell, ASP.NET, it is a framework for building web apps and services with .NET and C Sharp. So ASP.NET provides you with these pre-compiled libraries using which you already get the framework. You already get the structure ready for your application. Like you would need certain forms in your application. You would need a lot of buttons in your application. You would need uh, data display elements in your application. So all this is handled by the pre-compiled libraries that ASP.NET provides to you. And uh, so if a web developer is building his application in uh, ASP.NET so through ASP.NET all these basic features are already provided uh, and this framework is already provided for uh, developing the application so ASP.NET is a component that sits in the back end uh, in your app server and now the as I was showing you in the earlier slide the setup wizard has a extension of ASPX which means the page was built in ASP.NET and this is what the page looks like and uh, now let's look at where this vulnerability was so when you access the server and if you type in setupwizard.aspx the application if it is already installed on the server you will get nothing here uh, you know there, there is no activity because the application is already installed and you do not get this this page for setup wizard here uh, because the application is already installed so all is good here these checks are in place but if you add a slash after this main url after aspx if you add a slash that's it then you get this get to the setup wizard page and now using this page you can create an admin user and get a complete access to this to the application and then uh, you know then then you can imagine I mean what all can happen if you have a admin access to a remote control tool and uh, Now we will discuss about this slash why this slash is important or you know When you just put in setup wizard.aspx you get nothing all is good here But when you add a slash then why do you get this page? We will discuss that so to to understand that let's understand the path info feature in ASP.NET so we took a overview of asp.net why it is used by the developers now let's understand the path info feature in asp.net how it helps the developers when they are developing the application so asp this this path info feature it allows you to provide extra information to the server to serve you with different variants of the same page and uh, so after the main url you will add a slash and then you will add the extra path that you want to pass on to the server so this is used for refining the content simplifying urls there are various purposes but these are two of the main purposes that i can remember that refining the content and simplifying urls now what is refining content you know serving different content or variations of a page based on the extra path information provided imagine you you are accessing an online library and you are asking the server for a harry potter book now in harry potter you have different parts uh, so either server can provide you you know when you just type in books in harry potter it can provide you all the parts in the list or if you're looking specifically for chamber of secrets you know this part then you can provide that in the path or in the filter and then it it will you know give you that specific part so serving the information based on the extra information that is provided and this is very helpful from the developer's perspective also the simplifying urls feature is very helpful from a developer's perspective because when the developers are mapping resources behind uh, you know when they are developing the application in the restful interfaces then if the urls are simpler if they are human readable then it becomes very easy for the developers to define them in the um, api configuration to give you an example say you know you are accessing an e-commerce website like amazon now on amazon if you're looking for 
shoes shoes in black color say a particular size matching uh, within a particular price range that fits your pocket then there you are applying these filters you are sending that content that query to the server to give you what you have filtered now behind the scene the server is using the restful interfaces and in these restful interfaces the developers then they have defined these urls that okay if somebody is looking for products if somebody is looking for shoes then you know the resource is kept here provide that to the user so from the user perspective there is not much change but from a developer's perspective when they are defining these restful interfaces in the restful apis then behind the scene documenting these restful interfaces configuring these restful interfaces when the urls are simple human readable then it is very helpful so in a normal operation i mean this these features are very useful for application design allowing developers to structure urls in a more meaningful and readable way um, but however if, if it is not properly secured which is what we see here then it can lead to security issues and this is this was the case with 2024 1709 where you know the additional path information was not correctly validated by the application and that was allowing the attackers then to uh, get to the setup wizard web page which then allowed them to um, create an admin user so you know here if, if if you look like here the checks were in place like if application is already installed on the server and if you're trying to access the setup wizard.aspx you are getting nothing but then <clears throat> if you're providing this slash then you are using the path info feature of uh, asp.net and the application here does not have in its code a validation to make sure that this setup wizard.aspx should not be <clears throat> you know available for the users if it is already installed on the server no matter if somebody is typing a slash and trying to use the path info feature of asp.net this should not be available this validation was not there and that is the reason when adding a slash you are utilizing the path info feature of asp.net and you get this um, screen connect startup wizard page and using which then you you know when the attackers they click next next they can they get an option to create an admin user now the the update that was rolled out so this is the patched code this is the original code of setup wizard.aspx page this is the original code which has this validation missing um, this is the new code this is the patched code the security fix in which if you see the validation is there there is a if condition defined here which states that if setup module is set up then throw an exception already set up don't serve that page so yeah this is the validation that needs to be in there and uh, this is a perfect example like when you're using these frameworks like asp.net or, or the frameworks to build your applications on then you need to be fully aware about the features that these frameworks are providing in order to you know uh, ensure that your application has uh, you know right validations in place um, to to prevent from exploitation this is the same thing that we saw in um, you know, very similar to what we saw in citrix bleed vulnerability as well that came out last year on for that i already have a video on my channel where the sn printer function of c was abused uh, i mean not not the particular function was abused but the way the sn printer function interacts with the citrix application and the way it was um, the citrix application was taking the response and without any validation sending it to the user uh, or the researcher or the attacker it was giving out more information doing a buffer overread uh, attack so yeah that kind of check was not in place and in, in this case also this check was not in place this if condition has now uh, put this check in place so now if somebody tries to utilize this path info feature by putting a slash you will not get a setup wizard so these are some of the references that are available publicly that i used to research on this vulnerability there is also a github um, repository available with a poc if you want to download and run it in your test lab then it is available uh, yeah so that's the end of part one in part two i have gone through various resources um, and i have seen that um, several cybersecurity companies they have already started seeing attacks on connectwise servers and um, these edr companies then collecting all the data and the impacts they have produced a lot of um, research material that is publicly available 
by studying that then we will populate the mitre matrix uh, and in which we will highlight um, certain techniques that are used um, to conduct a ransomware attack by exploiting this connect wise vulnerability how it is conducted we will see that in the part two all right then if you have liked the video then please subscribe and share it with your friends this will motivate me to create more such videos on new vulnerabilities that come out thank you i will see you in the next part